let's say a country, a Somalia, disintegrates and people set up shop there who instead of exporting arms and radicalism decide they're going to export nasty nastiness over the web, right? Um, what's your sense? Is it possible? Yes, it is. I, um, so to Thanks kind of touch on this past, that what Ron was talking about as well as others, um, and kind of touch on that. So the problem is, is that as you know, many of us travel around the world and uh, travel to various places. Granted, you can touch the internet from anywhere. Uh, you can jump into a country and jump out. Uh, from a security standpoint, I don't rely on the DNS to go to, you know, Reuters.com or you know, BBCNews.com. Simply put, you can bypass the DNS through the IP system, and a lot of countries are not blocking at the IP level. If you go into any country and try and go to something not triple X, yes, you're not going to get it from the from an actual browser. But if you do a Who's lookup, which is relying on the DNS, or if you know the IP addresses of your servers, you can get to them. Very few countries are blocking at their borders the IP addresses. Now, as IPv6 comes down the pipe, trying to memorize an IPv6 address becomes near to impossible. Um, you know, just from, from the scripts that I run for various tasks that I do for penetration testing and stuff like that, you have to be able to grab that from somewhere, which is relying on the who is and the DNS. So yes, to, to say that countries can block and censor is one thing to the normal user. To those of us that are in the security world, that, you know, and those that are technically competent, to be able to go in and do things in other ways than the traditional end user, it, there's a big problem there. That's how I see it. Because as you see, you know, China, for instance, for instance, going to last uh, Singapore, I can't be sitting in Hong Kong, and I couldn't get to a couple of my servers. And I'm going outside, and then I realized, oh, I'm sitting in Hong Kong, I'm behind the Great Firewall. So yes, you know, I know the IP addresses, I can go straight to them. And I was able to get through. So you have that aspect of security. And then also when you're talking about malicious users setting up shop in a country that fails, well, you've got two problems there. You've got who controls the internet there, who controls the networks. So what, there's so many variables there to, to factor in that any possibility of circumstances there for malicious users. I mean, you look at Nigeria, for instance. You go to Nigeria and put a Visa card or a MasterCard in, it'll automatically get blocked. In fact, when I was in Egypt, that happened. I called my bank and they said, if you're coming from Nigeria or Egypt your car, and you use your card there, it's going to get blocked, period. They wouldn't, even, they wouldn't even release it. So there are countries that already exist like that. So the problem is, is you know, law enforcement can only do so much to penetrate that before corruption becomes the larger problem. 